I believe so. Great. So right, ladies and gentlemen, we are doing uh, what we call economic value added model. Ever economic value added added model, very popular, popularly known as what year ever. Remember, ever borrows heavily, borrows heavily, borrows heavily from where? From residual income, from residual income. So we cannot start really this ever model without you telling me how do we get residual income? Residual income, how do we get residual income? How do we get residual income? How do we get residual income? Who remembers? Residual income equals something minus something. Residual income equals who minus who? Residual income equals who minus who? Residual income equals who minus who? I'm so sure there must be some people here who are going back to their notes to make reference. To start. To sad. Thank you very much, Atieno. It is profit minus coca. It is profit. It is profit minus coca cola, or, or rather coca. Profit minus coca. Where coca, where coca is cost of capital employed. Cost of capital, cost of capital employed. Cost of capital employed. So remember. To get this cost of capital employed, what do we do? At times, the examiner will give you cost of capital, cost of capital times, times the capital that was employed. Capital employed. Capital employed at the beginning of the year. Times capital employed, if possible, at the beginning of the year. Because you to look at that, how much capital was employed at the beginning of the year. And this capital that was employed at the beginning of the year was able to deliver what result in form of what your pro profit, right? So it is cost of capital times capital employed. Remember, capital employed has got another name. Capital employed is the same as what year? When we talk of capital employed, capital employed, capital employed is the same as what year somebody is the same as net. Net assets is the same as net assets, is the same as net assets. Now, as and gentlemen, we know for sure that uh, EVA, EVA, economic value added, economic value added, economic value added, borrows heavily from uh, residual income. Only that for, for, for EVA, we are going to make adjustments to the profits. So basically, Eva here will be adjusted, adjusted, adjusted profit, adjusted profit minus. We prefer instead of cost of capital here for Eva, we prefer using WACC, not unless they don't give us WACC, but we prefer using WACC. So it shall, it shall be WACC times adjusted, times adjusted net assets times adjusted net what year, net assets or adjusted capital employed. Adjusted capital employed. Now my good students, please listen and listen to me very well. What kind of adjustments do we make to our profits? What kind of adjustments do we make to our profits? What kind of adjustments do we make to our capital employed? Remember, number one, that EVA is a futuristic model. EVA is futuristic, futuristic. So any expense that you incur today, which has got future economic benefits, according to EVA model, you should never punish managers who incur expenses today, which have got what year? Future economic benefits. Never ever punish them, actually encourage them. And that is why we normally say that EVA is a long-termism model. A long termism model. A longer termism model. Eva is a long termism model. So if there are expenses that you have been incurred today whose benefits will be realized over the current year, like if you market today, like the kind of marketing we keep on doing, ladies and gentlemen, this marketing, of course, has got a multiply effect. We shall be able to eat more 
of our marketing today in the future. In the future, I'll be able to get so many students. That's why RSM Online College keeps on, in this case, you're doing what you're growing and grow, growing. So marketing is an expense that has got what your benefits in the future. Is there any other expenditure that you guys know has got an exp a, a, a benefit in the future? Any other expense apart from marketing? Any other expense apart from marketing which has got uh, benefits in the future that you guys are able to remember? Yes, research and development. If we develop a product today, for example, like now Coca-Cola was developed so many years ago, right? And yet Coke is still reaping major fruits out of that benefit many years after it was uh, developed. So research and development, I love that. Any other expenditure that you guys know that uh, happens to be having uh, future economic benefits, whose benefits will span, will go beyond this year? Yes, the training cost. When we train our workers, of course, we expect to reap in the future. We expect to reap in the future. We expect to reap in the future. Right. And then the other thing that you're supposed to know is that uh, EVA is a cash flow based model. Unlike residual income, which is purely historical, which is purely profit, EVA is a cash flow based model. And that is where we add all the non cash operating what you expect expenses. Any non-cash operating expenditure, depreciation, amortization, ETC, all those expenses must always be added back to make, in this case here, to, to be able to derive what we call a cash flow, a cash flow. So are we together, first of all, up to there? Are we together? Are we talking? Are we talking? Are we talking? Are we talking? Great. Their understanding. Thank you very much. And I would want to project something here. So you can go now through these notes having uh, discussed them. So you're saying that economic value added model is a performance metric that is very similar in approach to residual income and is defined as being EVA is net operating profit after tax minus WACC times book value of capital employed. EVA is a trademark technique developed by consultants called Stan Stewart and the company. Don't cram that. There's no examiner will ever ask you that kind of a, a silly question. Who discovered EVA? Nobody. The principle behind it is that a business is only really creating value if its profit is in excess of the required minimum rate of return that shareholders and debt holders could get by investing in other securities of comparable risk. The capital employed is the opening capital employed adjusted for the items set out below. EVA allows all management decisions to be modeled, monitored, communicated, and compensated in a single and a consistent way, always in terms of the value added to shareholder investment. However, EVA makes certain adjustments because certain types of expenditures which appear in the statements of profit and loss under ESAs and the IFRS, supposed to be under IAS, and the IAS, International Accounting Standards, and the International Financial Reporting Standards are not regarded as expenses when using EVA. And the cash accounting is regarded as more reliable than accruals accounting, becoming a bit complicated, but we'll be able to understand this really. The major adjustments are like this. Add back to profits, expenditure on building for the future, expenditure on building for the future, e.g. research expenditure, marketing expenditure, and the staff training, those expenses, ladies and gentlemen, should never ever be expensed. What you are told is that whenever you incur an expenditure that has got future economic benefits, remove it from the income statement, take it to the balance sheet. You take it to the balance sheet as an intangible asset. You remove it here, you take it to the income state or other balance sheet as an intangible asset, an intangible asset. Why? Because remember by definition, what is an asset? An asset, ladies and gentlemen, is any, 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 I can call it, a, could be a tool, it could be a machine, it could be whatever, which has got future economic benefits. So these expenses that you are incurring today that will be giving you expenses in the long term, then they should never be expensed 
When you expense them is uh, putting them in the income statement. Remove them from the income statement, take them to the balance sheet as an intangible asset. So we are told here, expenditure, or rather all non-cash expenses, ladies and gentlemen, have to be added back. Any provision, a provision is an uncash expense. Any good will written off. Depreciation, add book depreciation, and deduct economic depreciation. If economic depreciation is not given, assume it is the same as book depreciation and that there is no net adjustment. There is no net adjustment. And then we have interest on debt capital that has to be added back after adjusting for any tax relief. Treat the debt as part of capital employed. Adjustment to the statement of financial position for the students who are in my last class. We said that uh, any non-capitalized leases has to be capitalized. Research ETC now has to be capitalized. Any good deal that was written off in previous years has to be written back, right? Provisions, ladies and gentlemen, you have to take them back to the balance sheet. And then they are giving us a good example. Let me go through the charts first of all. Ah, great. What is that? Economic depreciation. Great. Uh, kindly zoom out. I'm unable to read. I wish I saw that earlier on. I wish I saw that earlier on. How about now? Is it much better? Is it much better? Is it something that you can read now? And if you're able to read, because I'll not repeat reading, please take screenshots. Take screenshots. After all, this book is yours. I'll share this book with you immediately after this session. I'll share this book with you immediately after this session. Great. Yes. So if you have been able to take, there is no even good reason for you to take screenshots really here because the book is yours. And I'm so sure you've already picked, in this case, yes, sir, something out of this. Ladies and gentlemen, to answer my friend Abby here, she's asking what is economic depreciation. Remember, we have uh, this depreciation that uh, is book value. Depreciation, for example, that comes out of what year? Policy, where we say we shall be depreciating our assets, for instance, on a straight line basis over five years. And then we have got this other depreciation that will come and look at an asset. Look at, for example, the kind of sales you are able to generate out of these assets, the benefit. We say, no, this thing, honestly, is impaired. This thing, the depreciation is, should be higher. So in terms of uh, you getting what we call no part, net operating uh, profit after tax, what we shall be doing? We shall come here and add back, we shall add back this book depreciation, add back book depreciation, and then we shall be lessing, in this case here, what we call the economic depreciation. What if the two are the same? When the two are the same, it's either you come and add back, for example, depreciation of 10, and then you come and less, in this case, economic depreciation of 10, meaning that they will be canceling out. So when they are the same, in this case here, we don't pass any adjustment. We don't pass any adjustment, and that is what this examiner is telling you here. This is what this examiner is telling you, that depreciation, add back book depreciation, and deduct economic depreciation. If economic depreciation is not given, assume it is the same as book depreciation, and that there is no net what year adjustment. There is no net adjustment. There is no net adjustment. There is no net adjustment. So the best thing, up, ladies and gentlemen, is to go to a question, really. Let's go to a question, Eric. Right? So we come here. Extracts from the accounts of value company are as follows. We have income statements. They have given us revenue. We have the pre-tax accounting profit. And then we have the note being given here. Note one, capital employed at the end of 2012 amounted to 350. We have a value company at non-capitalized leases, value at 16 million in each years, 2012-2014. The leases are not subject to amortization. Right, ETC, ETC. So what do they want us to do, ladies and gentlemen, here? They want us to do something very easy. They want us to calculate the economic value added in each of uh, the years, 2014 and 2013. 2014 and 2013. So we're going to send you this book right now. 
And as I do that, I expect you guys to remember this, to remember this. That our ever, ever here is adjusted profit. And the adjusted profit is what we gave a very special term. This adjusted profit is what we call the no part. No part. Net operating profit after what? Net operating profit after tax. Net operating profit after taxation. So I want to give you exactly five minutes. You try to compute for us this net operating profit after tax from this question. Please try computing this net operating profit after tax. Net operating profit after tax from the question provided here. I'm giving you exactly five minutes and I would want to sh share this book with you during uh, those five minutes. The key thing here is for us to get the adjusted profit. Let's get the adjusted profit. Let's get the adjusted profit. So how do we get adjusted profit? How do we get adjusted profit? So to get adjusted profit, adjusted profit, remember that this adjusted profit is what we are calling the famous no part, no part. No part, no part. And because we are talking of a no part, no part, when they talk of a operating profit, operating profit, ladies and gentlemen, is always the same as what here? Profit before interest and who? Profit before interest and tax. Profit before interest and tax, right? Profit before interest and tax. Actually, what you're supposed to do to be able to get this PBIT, it's very easy, very easy. Just look at all the items affecting our profitability and they leave out the interest and the tax. But now later on, of course, we'll be required here to adjust for what you for tax to get net operating profit after tax will come and less uh, the tax aspect. Now listen and listen to me very well. When I was teaching you advanced financial reporting, group cash flow statement, we said, according to IAS uh, 7, we said, always start with the profit before what? Tax. Profit before tax. That is a group cash flow statement. Here, it's quite different. For EVA, we normally start with profit, profit after tax. Start with profit because, you, because of this. Profit after tax. So start with profit after taxation. So give us profit after taxation. Remember, we have got two years. Which years are this? We have got two years. Which years are this? We have got two years. Which years are this? We have 2013 and 2014. Write them in this way that you're used to. So 2013, 2014. So are you able to see the profit after tax in 2013? Are you able to see the profit after tax in 2013? Is there anybody who can see profit after tax in 2013? Oh, yes. I can see 2013 profit after tax is 71 versus 88. 71 versus 88. So we have here 71, 71 versus 88 like that. That is profit after tax. This is our famous part like that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember here, I've deducted interest. I've deducted interest. Because I deducted interest, I need to do something back. I need to add something back because what we want is operating profit. So we need to come and add back, add back interest. Add back interest. So are you able to see the interest amounts? Are you able to see the interest amounts? Are you able to see the interest amounts? The interest amount that I'm able to see here, this examiner will give you the interest. It's not given here. 
it means that down here, they must give me the interest, the interest that was payable in 2013 and the interest payable in 2014. Are you able to see the six and the eight figures? Oh, yes. So I can see six and eight, but now there is one condition here. Six and eight, there is one condition here, six and eight. Remember, this is a full interest. Thank you very much, Jackie. This is full interest. And the interest is normally tax allowable. So tax must have been deducted in arriving at this figure here. So it means that eh, the interest has to be tax adjusted like that. The interest must be adjusted for what year for tax. You cram it that way. There are two ways here. We could either book them as whole numbers and then we subtract the tax relief, but the best is to adjust for tax. So you take the interest and then you adjust for tax. So one minus the tax you are told in this question is 30%. Tax given in this question is what here is 30%. Tax that is given in this question is 30% tax. That is given in this question Tax that is given in this question is 30%. Is there somebody who is able to see this figure of tax? Is there somebody who is able to see the figure of tax? It must be somewhere here. Must be somewhere here. Tax rate, note number six, 30% in both 2013 and 2014. So the most important thing, ladies and gentlemen, is for us to appreciate that eh, when we are adding back interest for purposes of getting uh, operating profit, that is profit before interest and tax, that tax has to be net, or that interest has to be net of tax, has to be net of tax. So could you kindly give me these figures? Somebody had given them to me. Kindly give me these figures. What do we have? Give me these figures. Mm -hmm. So 2013, what do we have somebody here? 2013, what do we have? 2013, what do we have? Somebody talk to me. 4.2. So this is 4.2. And then 2014 is 8 times 0.7. 8, 5.6 like about. Thank you so much. We have been able to add bank interest net of taxation. Is there any other thing that you guys think will need to consider for us to be able to arrive at net operating profit, which, which in this case is cash flow based? Is there any other thing you think is very important for us here to come and add back? Right? Depreciation. They're talking of depreciation. Thank you very much. The non-cash what here? The non-cash expenses. The non-cash expenses. Let's see. Let's see this. Let's see this. So you can even read this together. The capital employed, this will come in later. It can't affect us. It can't affect us. It can't affect us in the no part. Value company had non-capitalized leases valued at 16 in each of the years 2012 to 2014. The leases are not subject to amortization. The leases are not subject to amortization. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think in this case here should we do? What do you think should we do as regards these leases, as regards these leases, as regards these leases, in the income statement, nothing, 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 nothing. What you're supposed to do, ladies and gentlemen, if they were not capitalized, it means that uh, they were not part of our capital. And the capital basically goes to where? The balance sheet, the balance sheet, right? So if they had amortization, that one, of course, would have spoken about amortization in the income statement. So capitalization, the leases to be capitalized, we shall capitalize them in the balance sheet, not in the income statement, not in the income statement. Great. Great. Now, as a gentleman from there, we got the next one. So number three, value companies pre-tax cost of debt was estimated at this. This will help me to calculate WACC. This will help me to create WACC. The same case is not number four. The same case is not number five. Number six, I've seen where I'm using it. Number seven, economic depreciation amounted to 64 in 2013 and 72 in 2014. These amounts were equal to the depreciation used for tax purposes and the depreciation charged in the income statements. So can a good student help us think through this? What do you think of this depreciation? What do you think? 
about this depreciation. What should we do with it? Are we going to pass an adjustment or we leave it out of our operations? What do you think of this? Somebody, please talk to me tonight. Please talk to me tonight. Tonight, I would want you to engage me. When the depreciation, accounting depreciation, is the same as economic depreciation, should we pass an adjustment or leave that outside our analysis? Ignore. Thank you very much. Ignore. When the two, in this case, are the same, they shall cancel out. They shall cancel out. Ignore. You know, they'll cancel out. Thank you very much. You know, thank you very much. Now we continue from there. Note number eight interest, of course, I've seen where interest will be used. Note number nine other non cash expenses amounted to 20 in 2013 and 15 in 2014. What do you think about these other non cash expenses? What do you think about them? These non cash expenses, what do you think about them? Somebody tonight, you guys are great. Non cash expenses. Fatma, you can see Fatma was crying earlier on, but now she's happy. She's telling me the same case Doreen here. They have seen when Wilfred add back non cash expenses. So add back, add back non cash expenses. The non cash expenses. So the non cash expenses, ladies and gentlemen, the non cash expenses, the non cash expenses, they're here really. The non-cash expenses are here. We have 20 and 15, 20 and 15. So the non-cash expenses, the non-cash expenses, the non-cash expenses, we have here 20 and 15, 20 and 15. The non-cash expenses, the non-cash expenses, we have 20 in 2013 and 15 in 2014. What a blessing to have two for two months. Two for two months in this class, that's a blessing. Great. Both of you will understand this, so don't worry. Don't worry. So from there, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the next thing. The next thing, I'm so sure this one will be able to handle it very well. Note number 10, research and development expenditure on a new project that started in 2013 and written off was 10 million in 2013 and 11 million in 2014. What do you think about this research and development? What do you think about this research and development? What do you think about this research and development? What do you think about this research and development? What do you think about this research and development? These are expenses with a future orientation. Remove them from the income statement. Of course, the traditional accountant, the traditional accountant while arriving at these figures, the traditional accountant must have deducted. But we are aware that those expenses really, they, they should be taken in as assets. They should be taken in as assets. Those expenses should not be uh, put in the income statement. Now that the traditional accountant has done that mistake, what do we do with this research and development? I'm not seeing your answers here. I'm not seeing your answers here. I'm not seeing your answers here. Add back. Thank you very much. Add back. So add back, add back, yes. So research and development, we add back, we add back. We add back, we add back R and D, research and development. Add back, research and development. Add back, research and development. So research and development, they are telling us for 2013 was 10, 2014 was 11. So 2013 was 10, 2013 was 10, 2014 was 11. So could you kindly add this for you to be able to give us what we call the famous net operating profit after tax. For you to be able to give us the famous net operating after taxation. Net operating after taxation. What we have there, the net profit after taxation. Cash flow based profitability. Cash flow based profitability. Net operating profit after tax, the net operating profit after tax, what do we have? So 105.2 in 2013, 105.2 in 2013, and then 2014, 2014, 2014, what do we have here? 2014, what do we have here in 2014? So 2014, what do we have there? In 2014, what do we have there, ladies and gentlemen? 
They are telling me 119.6. So 119.6, thank you so much. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Please listen and listen to me very well. Remember these books I give you, they have answers at the back. You will simply scroll down. You will simply scroll down. This is supposed to be chapter 10. This is supposed to be chapter 10. This is supposed to be chapter 10. Chapter 10. This is supposed to be chapter 10. So chapter 10, ladies and gentlemen, chapter 10. Yes, you can now check the no part that these guys have so that we don't make mistakes. Yes, you can see the no part here. You can see the no part here for 2013 is 105.2. And then the other one is 119.1 what here? 0.6, we need to clap for ourselves. We need to clap for ourselves. At least we have been able to master something. The only thing that I know confuses my students, ladies and gentlemen, is this interest, which is normally added back. Please remember, interest is never added back as is. Interest, we normally take interest net of tax. Interest, we normally take interest net of what year? Net of taxation. Net of taxation. So are we together? Can I go now to the operating, not operating, but uh, uh, capital employed adjustments. Can we go to capital employed adjustments? Can we go to capital employed adjustments? Yes, yes, yes. Great. So you mentioned there capital employed adjustments. Capital employed adjustments. So capital employed adjustments, what do we have? I need to go back here to page number 80. I need to go back very first to page number 80. Great, so here we are. So I would want, ah, this is a very bad examiner. Very bad examiner. This guy has given me capital employed at the end of 2012, not number one. He has given me capital employed at the end of 2012. Remember our financial years are 2013 and 2014. This is a bad examiner. An examiner who does that, an examiner who does that, so I'll be able in this case to explain this Martin in a moment. An examiner who does this is an examiner who does not wish me success. Why? You know, I have 2013. So it means that this capital employed at the end of 2012 is the beginning balance of which year? 2013. Is the beginning balance of 2013. This capital employed at the end of 2012 is the beginning balance of 2013. So now he wants me to use this bad approach, bad approach, bad approach this is quite technical, but I'm so sure my students will be able to appreciate this. You see, if for example, he just gives me like capital employed of 2013, capital employed of 2014, just like that, then I would be very happy, right? Because I, I would have done like almost the same adjustments. If like this research and development, I would have added back. I would have added back, except interest, of course. I would have added back everything. But you see what this examiner has done, what this examiner has done, what this examiner has done, this examiner, ladies and gentlemen, has given us capital employed at the beginning of 2013. Then now my formula that I will use is this. The formula which I will use is this. I'll come and tell my examiner that the Eva, Eva equals uh, no part, no part minus WACC times uh, capital employed, capital employed at the beginning, at the beginning times capital employed at the beginning. Please write like that. Fatima, I've seen your question, I'll be able to address it. So Eva will be no part minus WACC times capital employed at the beginning, capital employed at the beginning, not at the end. Ah, ah. So then if that is the case, could you kindly come and give me here, give me here the capital employed, capital employed brought forward, 
brought forward to these particular years. Capital employed are brought forward into 2013. Is there anybody who is able to see this capital that was employed brought forward into 2013 at the beginning? At the beginning, at the beginning, how much? Please give me this figure, 350? Let's see, let's see, let's see. They are telling me the capital employed, yes, which was brought forward here, capital employed at the end of 2012, which now is brought forward to the beginning of 2013 is 350. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So this is 350, like that. Thank you so much. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we also have now the capital that uh, was employed as at the beginning of 2014, as at the beginning of 2014. I don't know why Jackie has run out again to pick profits. Profits are not the same as net assets. Net assets are found in the balance sheet. Jackie, the capital employed, which was brought forward here into 2013 is given here, is given here. You can see here, capital employed at the end of 2012, which of course marks the beginning of 2013, is 350, right? You see, what I ordinarily I would have done, I would have picked in this case here, capital employed as 400, these total assets here. The assets in 2013, I would have picked these 400 for 2013, and the 2014, I would have picked 506. But you see now this examiner has brought in confusion. He has given me the capital employed at the beginning of 2013, which is 350. So then using this information that we have here, can somebody in this case here tell me what capital employed will I book as capital employed at the beginning of 2014? Beginning of 2014, which capital shall, shall I book forward here? Yes. So 2014 capital employed at the beginning must have been the capital employed at the end of 2013, at the end of 2013, which in this case here, you guys are right, which in this case is 400, You're right, 400, 400, 400. Great, great. This figure here, let me repeat this, this figure here. You, can, you know, these are the capital employed because this is total assets, less current liabilities. So you can see here, you know, when they talk of net current liabilities, net current assets already they have subtracted the current liability. So whatever we have here is the current or rather is the capital employed, but now at the end of the years. And you want capital employed at the beginning of these years. Capital employed at the beginning of these years must be the capital that was employed at the end of, like if it is 2013, capital employed at the end of 2012 was brought forward. Capital employed at the end of 2013 becomes the capital employed at the beginning of 2014. And then from there, come and give us adjustments. So in this case, here, come and say, add back. Ah, very good. So of course, I have this, like now this, I'll come and even start with them. I'll come and say, add back, non-cash expenses. Non-cash expenses, I'll come and say, add back, in this case here, the research and what year? Development, research and development, research and development. Let's start with this. Please give me the figures to write here. Add back the non-cash expenses for 2013. What figure should I write? The non-cash expenses for 2013. What figure should I write? The non-cash expenses here for 2013. What figure should I write here? Quite confusing, but my students normally understand this. My students normally understand this. So the non-cash expenses from note number nine, how much should I write here really on cash expenditure for 2013? No, they're not talking to me. I don't know for whatever reason. These students have decided to switch off for whatever reason. They have decided to switch off really. 20 and 15, ah, 20 and 15, ah, 20 and 15. Now there is a problem, there is a problem here. There is a problem here. Now ladies and gentlemen, remember that this figure that you have here is not a figure of 2013 really. This is a figure that was fully adjusted for in 2012, right? So it means like now what I normally do myself, I'll bring in this case here some other different color, like blue color, I write here, I know that this figure, all the adjustments, 
to arrive at this figure were done in the year fine is 2013 but you see it's a brought forward figure so the adjustments here that were done to this figure to be arrived at were the 2012 figures the adjustments done here to arrive at this figure are the 21 at 2013 because you see these figures are brought forward figures so we did all the adjustments last year and then we brought them forward to these respective years we brought them forward to these respective years so now you have to be very careful when we talk of uh, adjusting uh, this figure which is a 2012 figure brought forward we can only adjust it with uh, what happened in 2012 in 2012 what happened in 2012? Like for sure, we don't have any non-cash expenditure of 2012. We don't have it here. We don't have any non-cash expenditure in 2012. We don't have it. We don't have it. We don't have it. We don't have it. Don't have it. You see here, the other non-cash expenses, they, they've only given us for 2013. Right. So in this case here, we don't have non-cash expenditure for 2012. So in this case here, the non-cash expenditure here for 2012 must have been zero. But when I come here, this figure that I've arrived at, which was computed in 2013, I happens to be, I happen to be, I mean, having the non-cash expenditure of 2013. Yes, that I have. That I have. That I have. Yes. That I have. Is there somebody who can see that non-cash expenditure of 2013? Anybody who can see that non-cash expenditure of 2013? Non-cash expenditure of 2013. So the non-cash expenditure of 2013, it is 20. This is what was deducted when this 400 figure was being arrived at. So here I should come in this case here and add 20. Right? Now, I would want to see, ladies and gentlemen, through the same argument, is there somebody who can give me the research and development expenses that I'm going to recognize here? Let me go back. Research and development expenses. Let me go back here. 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 Note number 10. Note number 10. Please give me the two figures. Tell me this figure, whatever comma, the second figure, give me. Give me the two figures at the same time without fearing anything. These are subjects and gentlemen that we have to be very rough even when you're teaching. And then of course you guys must be rough with it when you are learning. It's not a simple paper. It's among the hardest papers. Actually, Kastner will be striking it off. I'm so sure now that they have made it uh, uh, option, an option paper, I'm so sure this paper will just uh, die naturally. It's quite a rough paper. It has got even very few teachers in the market, right? Aha, uh aha, -huh. uh -huh. these guys are now rough students, which is very good. You must be tough. You must be tough. Uh, Fatima Karama says 2014-10. Ah, great. So ladies and gentlemen, you guys are correct. It should be zero and who? Zero and 10. Thank you very much, Jamie. Should it be zero and 10? Zero and 10. Thank you so much. Zero and 10, because really, listen and listen to me very well. This figure is a brought forward figure. We can only adjust this figure for 2012 transactions. In 2012, there was nothing like research and who? Development. In 2012, there was nothing like research and development. This one can only be adjusted for 2013 figures, of which we have research and development of 10. As a time back here, somebody asked me, where does the 2014 figure go to? We are not analyzing 2014, are we? We aren't analyzing 20, 2015, I mean. We're only analyzing two years, 2013 and 2014. Whatever in this case it happens with this figure, which is supposed to be uh, uh, um, uh, um, a year ahead of us, let it go to hell. Great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from there we are here. Thank you so much. So could you again tell me any other thing that you think will be very important for us to come and do it, for us to come and factor here? Any other thing that you guys think is very, very important? Is very, very important. 
any other thing that you think, ladies and gentlemen, is very important that we need really to come and factor in here. Thank you very much. The non-capitalized leases. The non-capitalized leases. The non-capitalized leases. So in this case here, we talk of capitalized now. So in this case here, we have the lease. The lease. So the leases, which were non-capitalized, could you kindly come and give us the figures for the two years? Give us the figures for the two years. Give us the figures for the two years. The figures for the two years. The figures for the two years for the leases, they're in those two. Not many will be able to get this correctly. Give me the two years figures, separating them with a comma, and be a tough student here. Be a tough student here. Leases, 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 leases. Leases. I can only see one person in the chat box. That's quite uh, a few number, really. Oh, six of them have spoken. Thank you so much. But today, I would want all the 30 to speak. So, and I would want you guys to be yourselves like I love. Uh, this lady called Lillian Kadima, she's herself. She's saying zero and 16. She's deviating from uh, what these other people are giving me, 16, 16, right? So let me see. Let me see. Let me see what the other students are saying. Wilfred, 16, 16. Eric Odinga, 16, 16. 16 for both years, but she's putting a question mark. Fatma, stop doubting yourself. Never be doubting yourself. Give us a figure without question marks. 16, 16. <laughs> great. Great, Lillian. Check out this. You see, they have told us, they have told us from 2012, the value was 16, 2012, 16, 2013, 16, 2014. So really, the lease amount in the year 2012 was 16, because I'm making adjustments for 2012 and 2013. 16 there. So please come and give us the total. Come and give us the total. 2012 isn't being factored. Why? Why is it not being factored? It has to be factored. Because here, we said to have arrived at this figure, we adjusted for us to arrive at this figure, we used the 2012 figures. So we can only use 2012 figures downwards, 2012 figures downwards. And then we can only use 2013 figures downwards. Right? Right? So a student asked here, interest, interest expense really, Jackie. Does interest expense go to the balance sheet? You don't capital employee this balance sheet, does it? Does it? Does it go there? No, it doesn't go there. It doesn't go there. So interest only affects where? Our income statement. Then somebody may ask, what, how about the non-cash expenses? They'll go here because some of these non-cash expenses are things like water impairment. And you see, Eva does not want you to write down assets. Eva wants you to maintain the value of assets, right? Right? And then, as a gentleman, listen, somebody asked here, somebody, there's another question that was asked, do I remember that question, really? It's a question that had been asked up there. You know, at times, I am forced to ignore you know, some questions because some of the things in this case here become clearer as you get along. And then, of course, I'll go back and try to look for those questions to see whether now the students have understood what they were asking. There's a question which was asked earlier on. Yeah, yeah. So explain the point of what here, depreciation. And then we have Martin who, say, who asked here, what about if depreciation are not the same? No worries, that I'll answer. No worries, that I'll answer. Listen. 
But before I answer that, let's look at the answers. You guys haven't given me the answers here, really. First of all, give me the totals. Give me the totals here. What do we have here in the year 2013? 2013, what do we have here in 2013? In 2013, 366, 446, 366, 366, 446. Thank you so much. 366, 446. 366, 446 is what they're getting. And of course, you can go to your answers. You'll be able to see chapter 10, chapter 10, chapter 10. This is so interesting, chapter 10. So interesting, chapter 10. Here they are. 366, 446. Hey, I'm so happy. Great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the last stage. The last step in this particular EVA model, EVA model, you can remember there is a student who was very happy that this model is named after her, Evelyn. But I'm not seeing Evelyn in my discussions here. I'm not seeing Evelyn anywhere. I don't know whether she decided to change the name. I'm not seeing her at all in my discussions. Here. So, of course, ladies and gentlemen, for us to be able to calculate EVA, we also need what we call WACC. So, we want to come and calculate WACC. So, how do we get WACC? I remember some time back here, a student told me that Mwalimu, you should be pronouncing this as Wakaka. Pronounce this as Wakaka. Wakaka. No, that is very unprofessional. How do you call this thing Wakaka? Right? Great. Great. So wakaka is equal to weight of equity, cost of equity, plus weight of debt, cost of debt, but after who? Cost of debt after tax. Cost of debt after taxation. Remember, we'll compute two WACCs. Give me the WACC. Give me the WACC of the year 2013. 2013. So is there somebody who is able to see the weight of equity in the capital structure? Is there somebody who can see the weight of equity in the capital structure? Is there somebody who can see? Yeah, you can see that number five. They have given us a targeted capital structure. Equity is 0.7. Debt is 30%, so 70% and 30%, 0 0.7 and 0 0.3, 0 0.7 and 0 0.3. So weight of equity is 0 0.7. Weight of equity is 0 0.7. So have they given me the cost of equity? Yes. Cost of equity is given. Cost of equity is given. Cost of equity is given. Cost of equity has been given somewhere here. Note three. The company's pre-tax cost of debt was 79 percent in 2013 and 10 percent in 2014. No worries, that is KD, KD. And then for the company's cost of equity in 2013 was 15 percent. So 15 percent in 2013 plus weight of debt, you've just told me it is 0.3 times cost of debt in 2013. Is there somebody who is able to see the cost of debt in 2013? Is there somebody who can see the cost of debt in 2013? Anybody who is able to see the cost of debt in 2013? I mean, these guys are not talking to me tonight. These guys have decided not to talk to me tonight. The cost of debt, the cost of debt from number three in the year 2013. 2013, the cost of debt is Two people have been able to speak to me, 9%. 9%. percent. These are low-hanging fruits. I'll be able to get this. So times 9%. So could you kindly give me this WACC, please? Could you kindly give me this WACC, please? For 2013. For 2013. No, no, no. This 9% is before tax. It, sorry, sorry. 9% is before tax. It must be adjusted for tax. It must be adjusted for taxation. So you must come and multiply this with one minus tax of 0.3. They told us, ladies and gentlemen, in this question that 9% is before tax. They told us that this is pre-tax. They told us, look at this, not three, the pre-tax cost of debt. So remember, this 9% has to be tax adjusted. So you take 9%, you multiply it with one minus taxation. And then I should be able to give us an answer like Helen Hamala has given us 12.39%. 12.39%. So on the same, same breath, come and give us the WACC for 2014. 
WSEC for 2014, WSEC for 2014, I'll talk over 0.7, which is the weight of equity multiplied by the cost of equity, multiplied by the cost of equity. The cost of equity, ladies and gentlemen, the cost of equity, what we have here, the cost of equity in the year 2013, as per note number four, the cost of equity is what, yes, somebody, it is 15%. It is 15%. So times 15%. Nope, the weight of equity 2014 is supposed to be 17%. 17%, weight of debt doesn't change. The weight of debt is 0.3 times the cost of debt after taxation. Cost of debt, I can see before taxation for 2014 is 10%. But now remember that this 10% has to be tax worthy, has to be tax adjusted, has to be tax adjusted, has to be tax adjusted like that. So then what is the wakaka? What is the wakaka for the year 20? What is the wakaka for the year? For the year, what is the wakaka for the year 2014? For the year 2014. For the year 2014, they are telling me it is what year it is. 14 what year? It is 14%. So I can see Fatma saying she's lost. Fatma is about following this. Are you able to see the weights? Are you able to see the weights? Yeah, and do you know the meaning of this? KE, do you know the meaning of KE? KE is cost of equity. You never did advanced financial management. Or financial management in section three. KE is cost of equity. KE is cost of equity. KE is cost of equity. Cost of equity. And they have given you cost of equity for the two years. They have given you cost of equity for the two years. It's given here. They have given you cost of equity for the two years. It's given here. They've given you cost of equity for the two years. It's given here. Right? If it's 2013, it's 15%. 2014 is 17%. And then we have KD. KD has also been given. KD has been given. It's about just plugging in. It's about just plugging in. Remember, KD stands for cost of debt. This stands for cost of debt. This stands for cost of debt like that. Cost of debt. Cost of debt. Don't worry, Fatma. It's unfortunate that you are exempted from the financial management of lower level. Nobody should be exempted from that paper. Nobody. Nobody. Never go for that exemption. Never go for that exemption. Now, ladies and gentlemen, after that, now we should be able to get what we call ever. So come and give us ever. So ever for 2013. We know that it is no part. No part of 2013 is given here. It is 105.2 minus WACC of 2013, which is 12.39%, multiplied by the capital employed, capital employed in 2013. This is 316, like that. Remember the formula of EVA. EVA, basically, you take no part minus WACC times capital employed, times capital employed like that, times capital employed like that, times capital employed, times capital employed. So please ensure that you are able to use your body mass very well to give me this answer of EVER in 2013. EVER in 2013, what are we able to get? Ever 2013, what are we able to get? What are we able to get? Ever 2013, what are we able to get? Uh -huh. So Doreen Gatui tells me 366. Ah, it can't be 300. Oh, 3, 2013. Oh, okay, 366. Ah, thank you so much for our future videos, yes. Thank you so much for correcting us. Thank you so much, 366 years, which at the end of the day gives me 59.85. Thank you so much, 59.85. And then now we have Eva, Eva for the year 20 when? 2014. Eva for the year 2014. So for the year 2014, I can see the no part. No part here for 2014 is 119.2 minus the WACC for 2014, which is 14%, multiply this by the capital that was employed in 2014, which is what year 446, 446, which will end up giving me what figure? Which will end up giving me what figure? Which will end up giving me what figure? 
which will end up giving me what figure? Which will end up giving me what figure? Which will end up giving me what figure? Fifty-seven point one six, fifty-seven point one six, of which you can see a deteriorating performance, deteriorating performance. When EVA reduces, that is so bad in terms of performance. You can see EVA of the previous year was higher. The economic value added in this case here for 2014 was lower. That is a sign of deteriorating performance. A sign of deteriorating, deterioration of what year? Performance. Deterioration of performance. Deterioration of performance. So is that okay? Is that okay? There is somebody who was asking about economic depreciation. And, uh, you know, if, for example, they told us that accounting or book depreciation is 10, is 10, and then we have economic depreciation is 15, then what I would have done, I would have, uh, ladies and gentlemen, taken, for example, in my profit after tax, 10, maybe uh, like that, what, or 12, to make it different from this. What I, would have, what I would have done, I would have come here and added accounting depreciation because it's the bad one you add it back 10 and then you less economic depreciation if they're different economic depreciation which is 15 like that so have i answered your question when martin q q t when they're different that's what you do. You add back the accounting depreciation. You less the good depreciation, which is economic depreciation. So, then, gentlemen, you've come to the end of this particular concept, and I would really want you to go and look at this book, especially, especially, especially like you now the potential problems of EVA. You need to go and look at these theories. They're very important, very, very important, very, very important. And then I would want you to select one question from your past paper of this EVA and I do it. Unfortunately, I've not seen any student who is uh, taking leadership in terms of group discussions. I've not seen anybody. In terms of group discussions, like after you've done this, you only need one question from your past paper that has got this EVA concept. Once you do that, send the question there on WhatsApp, and then of course, uh, people will be able to see what is happening and leave that out. Know the advantages, the advantages of EVA, and that is it. That is it. That is done. So thank you so much. So now we shall be able to pick the next concept.